Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to look at example one in our 2.7 notes on derivatives of implicit functions. So in this example, we are given an implicitly defined function and we see its graph on the right here. So we're letting x squared plus 3xy plus 4y squared equal 4. And we want to find the derivative of y with respect to x. So in general, just this y prime is a little vague. But when we're given an equation like this, then we know that that prime means that we want to compute the derivative with respect to that x. OK, so we've seen that notation a little bit before, um, but we're seeing it again here. And the reason why we're changing up not the notation is just so that we can be flexible when we're seeing different types of problems or reading different types of textbooks. All right, and as we notice, this function is implicitly defined. We can see its graph here. And it's not this nice function with respect to x. We need to write y within that equation to describe how x and y are relating to each other. OK, so to get started, the first thing we always want to do then is to compute the derivative of both sides. And before doing that, we just want to remind ourselves that y is a function of x. We're treating y like a function of x. So to remind ourselves, I'm going to change notation and let y equal f of x. So let's do that first. So I'm going to rewrite this x squared plus 3x times f of x plus four times f of x squared equals four. So the more you do of these types of problems, the more you will start to be comfortable not substituting in f of x for y. But when we're first getting into them, this substitution is really helpful, again, for reminding us that, f, that y is, in fact, a function of x. OK, so then the next step is to take the derivative, the derivative of both sides. So let's do that. So we're going to compute the derivative with respect to x of the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And again, that's all with respect to x. All right. So that left-hand side, we just have, a first of all, a sum of three terms. So we're going to bring that derivative into each term. So we can look at the derivative of each term separately. So the first derivative we need to compute is the derivative of x squared with respect to x. And that's just this nice power rule it becomes 2x. Let me make a little arrow there. Now we need to compute the derivative of 3x times f of x. So we need to recognize this as a product. So the first one was just a power. But now we have a product. So we need to use the product rule. So for that, we're going to use do the derivative of the first function. So that would just be 3 times the second function. And I'm going to use some lots of parentheses here to make it really clear what we're doing. Then I need to add that to the first function times the derivative of the second function. And I don't know what f of x is. I don't, we don't need to solve for y in the original equation. So I'm just going to write f prime for that derivative of the second term. OK, so now this last term, I just have 4 f of x squared. So we should recognize this as a composition. I could let f of x equal u here. Again, the more you see of these, the more comfortable, comfortable you will be taking some shortcuts and not using all the notation. But so we see a composition, f of x squared. So we need to use the chain rule. My R got a little funky there. Let's try that again. Chain rule. All right, so I'm going to use my big parentheses. So for that, the four is just a constant, so it can come out. So now I take the derivative of the outside function to f of x to the power of one times the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is just f. So now I have f prime of x. OK. That's the left-hand side. Now that's all equal to 
the derivative of four, which is just zero. All right, so now let's clean this up again by substituting back f of x, y rather, for f of x. So there we get 2x. And now I'm just adding here and here. So I actually don't need these parentheses anymore. But I'd like to use them so it's clear where each of these terms come, comes from. So I can just write 2x, this becomes a little arrow, 2x plus 3y plus 3xy prime plus 8y y prime equals zero. So I really encourage you to pause the video on this screen and make sure it's clear where each term is coming from. Okay. I'm going to add an extra page so I have plenty of room here. All right, so what's happening now? So now what we want to do is our goal is to find y prime. So this means we have to isolate or solve for y prime. So that means we're going to have to use some algebra. So let's go through the steps there. So again, I want to focus on y prime. So to do that, I see that there are two terms with y prime in it. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out y prime from each of those terms. So I have 2x plus 3y plus 3x plus 8y all times y prime equals 0. So do we see how we did that? And the reason is that's helping to gather all the y primes together. So when we isolate, first step is gather all the, the, the y primes, if that is what we want to isolate together, and then try to remove everything or put everything to the other side. So what we can do is subtract a 2x and a 3y from both sides. So that just becomes, now we just have 3x plus 8y on the right-hand side times y prime equals negative 2x minus 3y. And then now we need to get rid of this term in front of the y prime. So I'm going to divide both sides by that 3x plus 8y. Divide by 3x plus 8y. All right, so now that left-hand side cancels. And we're just left with y prime equals negative 2x minus 3y all over 3x plus 8y. So that is our final answer for y prime. And notice again, just as in the preliminary example, y prime is defined with both x and y. So that means it takes a coordinate, an xy coordinate, in order to find a specific y prime value. So going back to our graph here, so our graph, there are xy points on our graph. So if we want to know the derivative at this point, this is a point that looks like it's around negative 2, positive one and a half, we use both the x and the y to find the derivative at that point. And how do we use it? We plug it into this formula. So compute, we'll do this example. It's kind of a bonus example because we weren't even asked to do it. So we want to compute y prime at the point two, oops, negative two, 1.5. So we want to find the slope of the tangent line at that point. So how do we do it? Oh, well, we use the equation we just computed for ourselves. So let's do that. So that y prime is equal to, give us a little more room here, negative 2 times negative 2 minus 3 times 1.5 all over 3 times negative 2 plus 8 times 1.5. 
So take a moment, pause the video and figure work that, that computation out on your own calculator. And if we both did it correct, then we're both gonna get the same answer. I got something around negative 0.083, they're repeating, and we can check. Hmm, yeah, that tangent line looks a little negative, but mostly, mostly flat, but a little bit negative. So the slope, yeah, the slope of that line is gonna be about negative 0.083, awesome. All right, nice job team. Feel free to rewatch this video again to help make this material more familiar. And I'll meet you at the next one. Thanks for your work.